Hey, what's going on, Clever Investors? Sperber here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm excited that you're here. You're really gonna love today's training video. We're gonna be talking about some market statistics. I did a deep dive using some great data provided from my friends over at Housing Alerts. And I'm gonna give you kind of a snapshot of what's happening in the market, which markets I would focus on, which markets I would stay away from. It's one of the biggest questions I get all the time from new investors is, where do I focus my marketing? Which markets are hot, which ones are not? And as the market turns to a recessionary market or we're contracting the economy, where should I be focusing? What, market, uh, what investing strategy is the best for a down market? We're gonna cover that in today's video, and I'm gonna show you with the data. This isn't just my opinion, I'm actually making uh, really good decisions based on the market data, all right? You wanna see that? You're at the right place. Uh, make sure you smash the like button and drop me a comment down below if you get something from this video. So let's dive in. As you can see on this fancy little chart, this is the inflation adjusted annual home price appreciation chart of the entire United States. Now there is no single US housing market. It's made up of hundreds of smaller markets, obviously. Averages can be dangerous. I would never make a buying or selling decision based on averages. Uh, just ask the person who drowned crossing a river whose average depth was only one foot. I mean, that's not how we actually make major financial decisions. But it does show us that we've had the strongest or highest home price appreciation run since COVID hit in US history, even greater than in 2006, 7, 8, right before the massive housing crash back then. And so if we were just looking at this, we would say, wow, the market is absolutely on fire. In fact, look at this chart right here. This is June of 2022. This is a snapshot of the United States median home days on market in June of 2022. Look at all those reds, look at all those pinks, those yellows. That means this is a red hot market with very low days on market. That means properties are flying off the shelf nationwide. This is not normal, folks. If, if you were just to show me this one month, I'd still think real estate's hot. There's no market shift going on. We should be buying because it's the hottest market in US history. However, this is what a normal market looks like. This is 2019, June of 2019. This is what it should look like. This is what it does look like. You can tell that's not normal, but let me show you something that is quite interesting and very telling. If I was to toggle between June of 2022 and a year over year snapshot between June of 2021 and June of 2022, Look at what's happening. Look at the comparison on median days on market year over year. Remember, at the end of June, most markets were still super hot, reds and yellows. But now what's happening is it's radically expanding. The median days on market year over year is expanding. This is telling us that properties are sitting on the market significantly longer than they were just one year ago during the same month. So by historical standards, things are moving, but you can see the slowdown. This is very telling. All right, pay attention to the slowdown because my prediction is over the next few months, it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, which means more competition, behaviors change from buyers and sellers, certain markets that were never very strong, they were only strong because there was very low supply and strong demand. Now that that's flip-flopping, interest rates are rising, I'm telling you right now, markets are gonna start shifting. They're gonna shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market. We gotta know which markets those are. I'm gonna tell you here in a second. Now check this, this chart's really interesting. This is showing us price decreases on the MLS year over year. Um, pinks and purples, look at what's happening here. Those are the number of price decreases occurring for last month compared to the same month a year earlier. Now price decreases occur when the selling homeowner and the real estate agent agree to lower the price, typically because the property isn't selling, it's just sitting there. An increase in the number of price decreases generally singles weak market conditions or weakening market conditions. So you can see by the preponderance of the weak market pinks and purple colors, 
and the lack of the hot market red and yellow colors that this most recent map is very, very telling. There's a large amount of increases in the number of properties sitting on the market experiencing price drops compared to just one year ago. Now check this out. This is the number of months of inventory for June of 2022. So this is properties in inventory, very low inventory. All right. And it's showing reds and oranges and all that. It's less than a two month supply of homes available. This is extremely low inventory. And this has been the primary driver of the strong market we've seen over the past two years. But once again, look year over year. Things are really changing from one year ago. Inventory is growing. It's affecting different markets differently. You can see the trend in those mountain states. Look at the mountain states, Arizona, Colorado, uh, you know, up to Idaho. These mountain states, they're really being affected right now. And uh, the, the amount of inventory is significantly increasing. And just to show you what's happening here in Arizona, Two months ago, three months ago, we had like 8,000 homes on the market. We almost have 20,000 homes. It's, it's doubled. So if it continues on this path, just to give you some perspective, during 2011, 10, 11, 12, there was at its height, with all of the foreclosures that hit the market and the, all the inventory that hit the market, we had 40,000 homes. We're already halfway there, and I believe it's going to continue to grow Arizona will eventually turn to a buyer's market. Right now we're still a seller's market, but we're, we're on the way to turn into a buyer's market. I'll look at this next chart. These are active listing count year over year. It's another metric I like to look at. Active listings on the market, is it rising, is it falling? An increase in listings can mean that sales of existing listings are slowing or more sellers are putting their properties up for sale, which is happening. Either way, it generally means for sale inventories are growing and a slower market could follow. So we need to keep a very close eye on active listings hitting the market. Now, here's how things shaped up at the end of June. Once again, you can see pinks, purples taking over the map, meaning significant increase in the number of listings. The hot market reds and yellows have all but disappeared from this map. So now let's get into the good stuff. People are always asking me, all right, cool, Sperber, got it. Just freaking tell me where to invest and what type of investments work good in a changing market, a declining market. I'm gonna tell you right now, buying for cash flow plus appreciation is the play in a declining market, okay? Cash flow plus appreciation. So take a look at this uh, fancy cash flow finder. By the way, if you want access to these cool tools, Click the link down below. I'm going to hook you up with a 25% discount. Uh, my friend Ken, he is the founder of Housing Alerts. That's where I pulled all this data from. Uh, and he has given me this awesome hookup for any of my subscribers. Just, I don't really get a benefit from it other than you get a 25% discount. So click the link down there, grab yourself this amazing tool. If you're into data, if you're into analytics, if you wanna be able to hyper-target markets, this is where I go and then I grab this data and then I go over to my deal automator and that's where I actually do my marketing and run my business out of the deal automator, but I use housing alerts to hyper-target my marketing and know which markets to focus on. So check this out. The top 10 best states for cash flow are, drum roll please, West Virginia, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Kansas, Louisiana, Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky. All right, they are ranked highest for cash flow. I mean, that makes sense. Gross rent ratios are really, really high in those states. Now, here's the challenge with cash flow states. Normally, cash flow states are not strong appreciation states. Very rare do you have cash flow and appreciation, which is why if you can find that target, you really want to market there. All right. So West Virginia, Mississippi, okay, yeah, if we wanted to, you know, invest in West Virginia, that makes sense. Cheap houses, good rents, all right? But what about worst cash flow states? Let's stay away from District of Columbia, Hawaii, Utah, California, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, Massachusetts, Oregon, and Nevada. Dang, I didn't think Nevada would be on there. That's kind of surprising. I have an Airbnb in Nevada that absolutely murders it, so I guess it's how you run you run your rentals. Uh, but I will say this, these, this is still too high level. We got to drill down a little bit further. All right, let's go to cash flow and appreciation states. All right, 
Texas at the top of the list, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, Indiana, Arkansas, North Carolina. I love North Carolina, by the way. Great state to do uh, own property in. Oklahoma, Tennessee, Alabama. These are the top 10 states for cash flow plus appreciation. I mean, strong, strong job growth or a lot of people moving into the, the economy there. And uh, it's just continuing to push house prices up and uh, the rents and the income supporting those rents is staying strong in those states. But we got to drill further. We got to drill further. Let's go to metros. All right. The next layer down. Top 10 metros for cash flow. Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Danville, Illinois, Brownsville, Harlington, Texas. Are you guys investing in any of these places? I mean, look at this list. It's a pretty cool list. Gives you a pretty good idea of the metros ranked highest for cash flow. All right, these are just pure cash flow markets. Typically weak or low or non-appreciating markets, but they have a, you know, they have a hot score column. That's with the red cells. That indicates very low ranking in these metros for active, vibrant, appreciating markets. So yeah, could we could we buy something in uh, in uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas? Yeah, would it cash flow? Yeah, would it ever appreciate? No. And the reason you want appreciation plus cash flow is because when you have leveraged appreciation, that's when you build wealth. Leveraged appreciation builds wealth. Cash flow by itself, you have two, three months of the property sitting there vacant. It's going to eat up all your cash flow. You need to have that leveraged appreciation to get the strong. ROIs. Here's the top 10 metros for cash flow plus appreciation. These are the markets I'd be focusing on if I was you. And uh, you can see on there a surprising one, Yuma, Arizona. I own a lot of rental property in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, but Tyler, Texas, go find some deals in Tyler, Texas. Go find some deals in New Bern, North Carolina. All right, let's dr keep drilling down. Let's go to county level. Top 10 best counties for cash flow, ranked highest to lowest. Cochrane County, Texas, we got Georgia on there a bunch. We got Texas on there a bunch. Look how many times Texas is on there. Knox County, Edwards County, McDowell County. Man, Texas is a great place to own cash flowing real estate in these counties. So it, if, you, if you look at the state, Texas may or may not be on there, but if you drill down, drill down, drill down, you'll start to find these little sub markets that are really good for cash flow. But let's go to cash flow counties with cash flow and appreciation. This is, if you were to target by counties, this is where I would be focusing. Lots of Georgia, lots of Arizona, Florida, Virginia, Kansas, Kentucky, but Georgia's kind of crushing this list. Texas was the counties for cash flow, and Georgia is the counties plus appreciation and cash flow. So maybe take a look at some of those, do some research in those. Stay away from these ones, man. You don't want to be caught in these California ones, these Hawaii areas. Falls Church City, Virginia, we're not going there. We don't want to go there, right? They, they have bad cash flow and bad appreciation. We're just going to stay away from these places. And by the way, you're welcome for me just telling you exactly what to do. Courtesy of Housing Alerts, hit the link down below if you want to get your hands on these because they're updating all the time, right? Every quarter, all of this data is being updated and it's refreshing. So you want to, you want to keep an account with Housing Alerts. And uh, look, Here's micro markets. They're scored and ranked using proprietary algorithms for the likelihood of appreciation relative to all markets nationwide. That's very important. That's how they do this data. And the hot market score is expressed as a percentile from zero the weakest to 99 the strongest. For example, a score of 93, that means micro markets scored higher or stronger than 93% of all the similar US micro markets in the country. So you can see there's the map. That's hot market. That means appreciating markets. The red, appreciating, right? The pinks are the weakest. The reds are the hottest. So look, data. It's not that cool to sit there and talk about stats and data and stuff when it's just by itself. But when you use it to make informed decisions, especially when it comes to investing, it's going to save you a lot of marketing pain. You're going to get more bang for your marketing buck. It's going to help you make better decisions. Imagine if you're a developer or a landlord, um, or if you want to do Airbnbs in certain markets and you were just throwing darts at a dartboard, right? Very difficult to hit a target when you don't really know what you're looking for. You could be going up and down the East Coast, up and down the West Coast, just buying properties randomly. But with data like this, now you could be hyper targeted. I want to go into this market. I want to do my research there. I want to look at like U-Haul data, how many people are moving into this state, what's the job growth looking like, 
uh, the tech industry looking like, whatever, whatever the commerce industry is, and uh, you know, really start talking to real estate agents, property managers, lenders, and really getting a feel for some of these smaller markets that maybe aren't in your backyard, but because you had the data, you decided to do some test marketing in there and maybe even some investing. So hopefully this gave you some clarity that not all markets are created equal. Some of them are gonna really suck in a recession. Some of them are gonna be super awesome. And look, there's ways to make money in the real estate market and up markets, down markets, and side markets as long as you're educated, which is ultimately why you're here. So keep coming back. I'll have more videos in the future. Until next time, I'm Cody Sperber, The Clever Investor, signing off for now. Take care, comb your hair. Till then, we out.